question four. This guy biffed his new bike. Biffed it. <laughs> was that was that a thousand cc bike? Did I see that in there? On the Kawasaki, which one? Uh, the blue bike that he dumped. There was a video. You know, he's got a YouTube channel, <laughs> and he posted it. Of him dumping it, so we'll just have to give him a little <laughs> shit. Just joking around. But anyway, all right, I, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> So, okay. All right. Um, hold on. I'm still trying to pull up the question. Uh, four, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard the word. <laughs> I haven't heard the word biff. <laughs> I don't know why I think it's so funny. Uh, What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode. This will be episode three of. The Broken Moto Show, where me, my buddy Matt from How to Motorcycle Repair, go into after, go in after. That's the right word to say it. Go in after the questions that you send us through email, um, and send us videos and pictures and all this cool stuff. So, my name's Cody from Motorcycle MD. For those who do not know, this is my buddy Matt. Matt, what's going on? Yeah, I'm Matt from How to Motorcycle Repair dot com, and this is a show where you submit your questions and we answer it. Yeah, that's it. Simple. Simple. Yeah. What kind of beer are you drinking right now? Guinness. Guinness. Guinness, man. Okay. I'm more of a IPA kind of guy. So I love IPAs. Um, oh, really? But they love to give me a headache too. Yeah, absolutely. So, man, two, three of them and I'm hurting the next day. I don't know. I guess I'm yeah. old, you know? So Honestly, that's how I actually am with Bud Light. Dude, Bud Light oh, yeah. gives me the pounding headache. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, wait. What kind of IPA are you drinking? Okay. Right now. I have, this is from 21st Century Amendment. Um, it is uh, brew free. Mm, nice. Um, it's a good little, I think it's like a 7%. Oh, man. But it's got a lot of orange in it. Lots okay. of orange. And I like that. Yeah. Well, and so you got Guinness. So everyone knows. Yeah. Uh, so there's an IPA I like that's only sold in Wisconsin called Moon mm. Man. And it is, it is good. It's the best. It's I love it. It's just <laughs> it's good. Um, That's cool, man. Yeah. So maybe in another episode, but yeah. I, I'm fresh out. So well, now I'm actually on number two, which yeah. would be down. I, I love the art, dude. It says down to earth. Yeah. Nice. It's got, it's got a monkey in an astronaut suit showing in a hammock. Nice. All right. Yeah, those IPAs have crazy art, dude. Dude, like like the best. It's yeah. the best. Yeah. Let's get right into it. Um, I think we did three questions last episode, so let's see how many we can get through on this one. Yeah. Um, but okay. Here, so here it goes. I'm new biker, a relative newbie to motorcycling based in London, UK. My issue is not mechanical, but body work. I hope this is allowed. So he sent in a YouTube video. He's got a YouTube channel. So he sent in a YouTube video. So what I'll do is I'll probably download it and play this right here. Okay, dude, that sucks. You biffed on your new bike. That sucks. <laughs> okay. And big old biff. Yeah. So, I mean, oh man. I mean, I've, I've fallen on dirt bikes on the street. I never dropped yeah. a street bike, but uh, hey man, we've all been there. Right. Yes, so we have. yeah. Anyway. All right. So you've tried to repair the clutch casing by sanding down the scratches and ding. First, I masked off the area and dry sanded it down using wet and dry 1500 grit Cleaned it with IPA or alcohol before using XHT black spray paint as directed. As you can see from the pictures, the finish isn't perfect as the check texture is slightly different, even after polishing. Is it just a case of adding another layer of enamel? So grateful for any advice, noob, or is it newbie? I don't know. But anyway. Uh, what do you think? So, well, well first thing, you know, he, he showed – a picture of the spray paint can and it had 650 F on there degrees. So that it's like barbecue paint. Yeah. That stuff is flat. The label literally said extremely high temp paint. Yeah. So I, when you get into paints like that, they are almost like a wrinkle finish, yeah. I want to say, or textured like you're experiencing and it is flat there's no gloss to it. 
So it's not matching your factory paint, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I think enamel will be just fine for this application. Uh, it, those cases get up to like 250 degrees max, right? Yeah. Uh, definitely not i think the can said like 1600 degrees fahrenheit or something oh was it 1600 dude uh, it was I mean, outrageous yeah so no need for that paint yeah. overkill so, way overkill well so, what, what i'm also worried about sorry to cut you off what i'm also no. worried about is the enamel that he uses dude i i don't have good luck with enamels oh I don't no know, but whenever every time i spray on a black or anything color it either like does this little like dimple thing so like fish eye yes okay and i've tried like waiting for a long period of time i've tried doing it like within the directions like within 30 minutes start hitting it with like new like new coats or whatever okay i've tried layering it i've tried doing a number of different things i just had bad luck with the enamel oh, okay. help me matt help me well <laughs> i mean so i mean i think you had a fish eye so that's contamination and it's not sticking okay, okay. i think um, but what I, what I've done is like, if I spray enamel, you know, I let it dry or tack up and then I go put it on my barbecue grill at 200, 250 degrees. And I let that sucker bake mm, okay. for an hour. Yeah. And dude, that shit gets rock hard, man. Really? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely much better. And yeah. I think, uh, Duplicolor or Krylon. Krylon works yeah. better than Rust-Oleum, I think. Okay. And I like the tip on it better. Yeah. But the Krylon touch. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so yeah, so either either switch to a gloss paint for this guy. I would also, it looked like he had sectioned off like a small portion of it. Yeah. I would just, dude, I would just do the whole thing. So I, I think he doesn't want to take the whole cover off. I mean. I didn't see how big the actual cover was. All I saw so, was. It looks like a full fairing bike in the uh, video. I, I I can't remember, but yeah, it's a full fairing okay. bike and he's masking off the clutch area. Got um, it. so, okay. Well, first off, you got to sand off what you have on there. Start fresh. So get scuff that off. Um, I don't know, 400, 600 grit, whatever. Just yeah. get that, get that down. Uh, 1500 is way too fine. You'll be there for days. Uh, yeah. So scuff that off and then uh, repaint it with just regular low spray paint will be just fine. And uh, find maybe a medium gloss. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know even if they have a medium gloss. They probably just gloss. gloss. Yeah. Yeah. Semi gloss. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Yeah. So semi gloss would probably be a good match. And then, you know, anytime you tape off, you're going to have a hard edge. Boom. Uh, one thing you can do is tape paper all the way around like this. So when you're spraying, it'll feather it underneath here all that's around. That's, that's red level right there. Yeah. So, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it in that area because he's True. got his fairings and all that. So I think it might True. make more of a mess in that situation. But just um, anyway. Yeah, and no, that makes sense. And then after that, you're probably going to want to take like 800 to blend it. Then a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, right. and then maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand, and then right. and then like rubbing compound on a rag, and then it'll probably be good. Yeah, because you got to get rid of that hard edge that you created with the paint. Yeah, because you have your your you know, the layer that was there. Now you have your new layer. You got to bring that in. Um, yeah. Without damaging the original. So this is where it gets a little right. You know. Yeah. Okay, and then so that that'll take care of that. A little off topic is, man, you have you have a lot of balls posting a video like that, man. I don't know if I would do it. So that's awesome that you <laughs> yeah. posted a video of of you biffing. So that that's pretty cool. I mean, no, that's great. I mean, others can learn from it. Thank you, um, dude. And I think I noticed you had like a thousand cc bike. I probably would recommend something a lot smaller and less expensive for, for a new guy. And, yeah. and, you know, I'm guilty of it as well, but yeah. man, like a 600, a beat up 600 that costs a couple grand, three, four grand, yep. learn on it for a year. You can sell it for the same amount the year after. That's what I would recommend for, for someone just starting yeah. out. Buy a bike. You don't mind dropping. Yeah. 
it's when we try to tell people especially right. if you you know they even make i know i know you'll get tired of it quick especially after you've been writing up 1000 but they make 300s dude they're like they can give them for like 1200 bucks like kawasaki 300s honda has a, a cbr 300 and yeah. dude just drop it you know yeah push it to a limit and drop it and then you'll know what you can do or like a ninja 250 i know no one wants to be seen on a ninja 250 but um <laughs> hey Hey, you know, I mean, dude, you gotta work your way up. <laughs> yeah, get some, get some practice, and then uh, you know, work your way up as uh, yeah. as time goes on. Good advice, Matt. Good advice. Yep. Thank well you, done. man. <laughs> All right. So, question five. All right. Hey guys, super pumped for the new series. I can't wait to see what diagnostics you can give. Okay, here's my story. Let me try to edit this as I read. My name is Will from Ireland. A lot of people from out in the States. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool, I feel like. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I bought a Kawasaki VN750, which I believe is a, a like a Vulcan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I don't know too many bikes, but I'm, I'm going to try um, as far as outside of Honda. Uh, as a project bike, I have rebuilt the entire engine, all new parts gaskets seals and pumps i think that's like maybe one the oil pump it starts first punch or sorry first push of the button but it will not rev over 3000 rpm the electric checkout as does fuel flow as the tank is new old stock and also the petcock has been rebuilt compression is spot on also the only problem i found is and this is while I was rebuilding the carburetor was the emulsion tubes for the main jets had been over tightened to the point where they had warped the compression, the compressed inside warped and compressed inside. I'm not very good at reading anymore uh, of the carburetor. All the jets have been replaced, including the two emulsion tubes. So someone hammered down the, I, I think, what was that? The, the main jet on the emulsion tube or the emulsion tube on the, needle jet i'm assuming it's the the jet holder that you just talked about and then the emulsion okay. tube got it and then the main jet so there's really three parts that go into yeah. the body yeah right uh all the jets have been replaced including the two emulsion tubes could the carburetor be damaged as a result of this and would the and would this be the reason for the symptoms i'm having here's a link to the video which we will show you guys now Many thanks, guys. I look forward to the new series. So, a lot going on here. Yep, for sure. Yeah. And, and Will, you broke the first rule. We don't know what year it is. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it looks, from the video, it looks like uh, late 80s, early 90s, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is a problem mainly. Let me see if I can just... Cliff noted the problem is mainly when he starts uh, at 3000 RPM. So right off the bat in my brain it starts spinning and I immediately think of the vacuum slides. Yeah. Because if you guys have ever experienced a bike that has a bad vacuum slide, the rubber diaphragm slide piston, that's what the CV carburetor is all about. Um, it's a constant velocity. So it's measuring and metering its own amount of volume into the carburetor, into the engine all on itself. It's not rider input at all. Okay. When you're twisting the throttle, you're not moving that piston. It's doing its own damn thing while it's going. Right. So that, that there's a rubber section around that top. Cause I didn't hear that you went through the carbs. It sounded like you went into and found some things wrong. Maybe it's something that you might've just missed. If you take that rubber diaphragm and you really kind of fan it out in your fingers and open it up and have a, a look at it, 
it's rubber. It should be solid, um, and it should be flimsy, 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 uh, and it shouldn't be any deterioration going on. A lot of times on the older bikes, when just how they sit inside the top, they'll crease in certain sections around the rubber. And whenever that happens, that CV piston no longer functions. Okay, it just sits there. So when you're giving it throttle, all it's doing is taking in whatever it can underneath that CV, you just not to maybe push it up, but it's just escaping right out the top because there's no pressure for it to move. Um, that's immediately what I think of because that, that's exactly what happens. The bike will literally will not do anything over a certain RPM. It may be 3,000, it may be 25, it may be five. Um, that's, that's, that's the first thing and I'm done. No, I mean, I would, yeah. uh, I would say carburetor and yeah. yeah, that you're in the, the needle range, which is the mm. CV slide. Okay. In the video, it was idling fine. So the pilot circuit yep. is fine. And then you get onto the next circuit, which is the needle, which is affected by the slide. Like you mentioned, um, just to add a little more info in the video, I noticed that he had some kind of different exhaust on there and he it actually had like a flex pipe on there. Uh, so, oh, so, so yeah, so it has some kind of homemade exhaust on it. Okay. Now there was a brief view of the air box. It looks stock, mm -hmm. but who knows if it's been gutted or whatever. Yeah. So holes drilled through it. Yeah. So what I want to mention is if you take any part off a stock air box, it's going to run like crap. Bingo. And it's lean. So th there's all kinds of chambers to restrict yeah a stock air box, a stock airflow. If any of that is missing, you're, you're going to run like in that video. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we actually just had a, a VF 500 interceptor in, and they have a really fun, everything about that bike is funky, dude. The colors are cool, but the bike's not that cool. So okay. all the parts are different from any other bike out. Right. And on the air box, they have a lid that has a big hole in it. And the guy, and not knowing the customer, he had put the air filter upside down. So all you're looking at is a K&N logo. Can you put a K&N filter? Because that's the cool thing. Okay, to do. right. And so that's all you're looking at. So literally, you're not looking into the air filter, so it can't bring in air. So that was the first thing. I flipped the air filter upside down, and it ran, right? Okay. But then I'm like, man, it's just, it won't take throttle over four grand or like forty five hundred. And I go back to the parts fish and I realize that there's a little rubber snorkel. Snorkel, oh, yeah. What is little snorkel, dude? I'm yeah. like, oh, well, this is it. Like he's he's one. uncorking it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Something as small as that can cause dramatic effects. Sure. Because they put it there. Guess what? For a reason. Yeah. And yeah. um, a quick tip. I know, like I've been talking about applying choke in certain uh questions answered here yeah um you know what i've done in the past is apply tape over the air duct to yeah. restrict air and make it run richer so yeah. that's just a quick trip i mean a piece of tape takes two seconds to put on right i don't know if that applies here but you know what i'm saying is like you can do simple things to alter yeah. the fueling for diagnosing a problem yeah that's literally what i did on the interceptor so oh yeah tape yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, I got tape on it. And you just need to find yourself a new one because they're not available anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, that's okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh man. Cool. Well, he could jet it, right? He, yes, but yes, yeah, he could. He, he yeah. totally could, and then just Absolutely. never be able to enjoy the bike. Yeah. Okay. Because he'll just keep on jetting, keep on jetting. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I think that's it for this question, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's all I got. All right. Let me. Uh, where, where is it? Okay. Next one. Good morning, guys. My name is Gus from Tucson, Arizona. I have a 97 Vulcan 800 California model. I brought it to life a few months ago. It doesn't go over 50. It gets to 50 and starts to sputter. I redid the carb per Matt's how-to video. Pretty simple. So yeah, I got a video on that bike. Oh, sweet. I had an electrical issue with the starter. I took it to mechanic and asked to route or fix the vacuum lines, which he did. The bike had a hypercharger filter installed, no canister. Underneath the gas tank, there are three nipples. One is connected to the carburetor, front right. Another has a hose that runs out of the bike to expel extra gas from the gas tank, front left. Last one has no attached. Note, the Petcot vacuum hose connects to the carb and tees to the hypercharger. I have compared the hypercharger and the motorcycle manual schematics to the fuel lines and hit a dead end. 
to me using the schematics, everything looks good. I appreciate any help you, Cody, and Matt can give me. All right. Mr. Matt. Okay, so first off, let's um, talk about the three hoses to make sure they're installed correctly. So um, there should be a six millimeter, a quarter inch hose off the petcock, which will be for fuel to the carb, okay? Uh, then there'll be that uh, vent hose. That should be what, three sixteenths or uh, four millimeters, roughly yeah. five, whatever. So that is just strictly to let air into the tank, air in and out, so fuel can flow. So maybe right. it's a good idea to blow through that hose, put your mouth over the hose and just blow into it to make sure right. uh, it's not obstructed. Um, the last one is a vacuum source or signal to the petcock, which will open it when it's running to allow it to flow. Boom. Okay, I, I, it doesn't sound like it's hooked up correctly. It sounds I mean, like the, because the hypercharger is sharing that vacuum, right? Yeah. Well, normally so, the, va the, the hypercharger that I've seen, they share vacuum with okay. the petcock. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm not too familiar with this hypercharger stuff. Okay. So, so it has like a, a butterfly yeah, well, exactly, on it, vacuum exactly. operated. So okay. When you, when you give it throttle, it sucks more right. and it kind yeah, of closes I, off the thing. Yeah. Okay. I've seen that. So it sounds like it's um, getting a vacuum signal. Mm-hmm. So that, that sounds correct, I guess then, right? Yeah, would, and it's, it, it sounds like it. And it's running, so it's getting fuel. Um, now, this model, I believe, might have a position on the Petcock called PRI, Prime. Mm -hmm. That flows regardless of vacuum signal or not. So that, that sucker bypasses, you know, it's in bypass mode, and that's to fill right. the carb or whatever. I. I I guess you can turn it to that mode for diagnosing uh, if you want. Um, but I guess a weird switch because they had those on Suzuki's too, on old Suzuki's. Yeah, I had an '86 GSX-R 750. It had the Prime thing on yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I guess I have to ask if the, is if is this thing's jetted because it ha it doesn't have the stock airbox. Right. Um, and then you have to ask, I mean, it has to have jetting done to it or a jet kit. Otherwise, it will not run. Even close to 50. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, it's, it's getting back to what you said earlier. It's probably your slide acting up. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, or, I mean, it's not fueling correctly in the half throttle range, which is the slide. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's what I got. Go ahead. No, yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm glad you knew more about the vacuum hoses than I did because I, I didn't know what he was talking about. But now it all makes sense because that's exactly what the vacuums are for. So, right. Um, yeah, blowing through the tank is important because if you don't, or if there's a blockage there, the tank will literally just cave in um, because of the vacuum that's created from gas leaving. So that's important. Right. Um, Jetting is going to be a factor, especially with the hypercharger, because that's what you got. I hate those things, so I'm sorry that you have one on your bike. Um, but I would, you might need to start jetting it and start going up bigger, because it, it may reach 50, and then once you give me more throttle, it may just be like, you know what, I need more gas right now, and you're not giving it to me. You know, right? Um, I'm not sure what you got going on. More information is key when you know the types of questions. So. That, uh, I was also wondering if it had a, if it had, you know, sometimes they have like a fuel pump when the carbs sit like into the tank and there's like, you know, the gravity of fuel is plays yeah. a role. So, Do you know if that no, one? It, it does not. And here's okay. why, um, I, I worked on this model and I did a video on it and you know, what happens is the float gets stuck open and the whole, all the gas gets dumped into the engine fantastic the whole crankcase yep. fills up with two <laughs> gallons of gas um so yeah it's just gravity flow okay um, okay but um, yeah so uh, okay so maybe a couple quick things you can do i said this like three times already apply some choke see yeah. if it gets better uh, get some tape and tape up the hypercharger holes which will r reduce the air and see right. if it responds. See if the engine responds. Those are 
10 second tests you can do. Yep. If it responds better, you're lean. Yeah. Yeah. And try to do like one thing and then go for a ride, you know, cause if you yeah. do like four things, you'd be like, Oh, one of them did it. And then you won't know which well, one it was. Yeah, sure. One thing at a time. Yep. Yeah. One thing at a time. Cool. All right. That's it for that one. All right, All right, we're at the we're at the twenty. I think we're at the twenty-two minute mark. What do you got? I totally forgot to write it down. So oh, cool. So I think we should do one more. Yeah, it 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 sounds like we can do about three questions. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can. <laughs> this this next one's interesting. So yeah, go ahead and uh, you right. can read it off. Cool. All right, question number seven. I have a nineteen eighty three Suzuki GS. 750 ES. And this is the bike that you just said that you used to have, Matt. Uh, I had a GSXR, uh, oh, 80, okay. 86. So, okay. yeah. Do those have the round headlights in the front? Yeah, two round ones. Oh, dude. Oil cooled. <laughs> dude, I love that bike, and it had <laughs> it had flat side carbs on it. Oh man. And, yeah. and going back to kind of poking fun at noob. Well, I bought the 750 when I was 18. Yeah. No license. And I, <laughs> it was too much bike, but, to I lo- but I loved it, man. Go. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't crash it, but hey, <laughs> but almost, I mean, oh my oh, God, dude, that thing was good. a lot of fun. Yeah. So dude, the, right. there's something about the nineties sport bikes that just look so cool to me. Like they yeah. like cut holes in the fairings for like breathing and like, oh, I, I just love the round headlight big fairing big swooping yeah. fairing sport bikes really yeah cool. it was it was a cool bike because you sat in it versus yeah. like on top my my butt wasn't higher than my wrists and right so right, right. it was comfortable <laughs> yeah. to ride i mean um it's an old school bike but hey it yeah, is. this was 1999 is when i had it okay so this is way back dude right so but anyway all right sorry yeah, uh during ahead. low rpm under under a thousand rpm uh, while in neutral, there is a significant chatter noise coming from the clutch. If you increase RPM, it goes away. If you pull the clutch lever in, it goes away. While under load in gear, even at low RPM, it goes away. I have taken the clutch apart and verified that all springs in the geometry of all the drive plates and driven plates are well within factory specs. I verified the bolts and tightened to spec torque can you give me ideas of where to go from here and what to be checking inspecting or replacing thanks ryan in kansas all right what you got i got nothing no <laughs> the the clutch um the time I've, I've heard chatter is coming from the movement of the plates inside of the basket right so the basket clutch basket I know, uh, Ryan, you pulled it off and you were like, oh, clutch plates, oh, steel plates. And you looked at those and the springs and you tightened all that stuff. Toward. The basket it's held in has fingers that hang off of it, right? And they hold the plates in. And what can happen is on a bike with a uh, high mileage, which you didn't put your mileage down. It's okay. We forgive you. <laughs> um, the plates inside, um, if it's a high mileage bike, lots of uh, working uh, miles the plates can dig into these fingers and it creates this gapping and it causes the plates to kind of just rattle a little bit. And when you pull the clutch in and they change because you kind of like you, you've moved the movement of where they were sitting. Um, or when you put a load on the motor, cause you're putting a load in the basket sometimes. And this is not just a scapegoat out of this, but like, unless you've owned the bike for its, its, whole, its whole life, some bikes, have very loud baskets because they meet in contact with the uh, crankshaft. Like they're like directly in in contact with it. So those gears that mesh are loud. CBR one, like 06 to 07 CBR 1000 RRs, super loud. Just clutch out, sitting in idle. You put a clutch in it, it goes from like to nothing. Um, Not saying that that's, it's like a normal thing for your bike, but that's what I would expect. If, If you told me that I would, pull the clutch cover off and I would go in after to see if there's any, a lot of wear taking place on the clutch baskets, fingers, the hub fingers. <sighs> what about you? So, I mean, like I, 
I don't think I've heard. I mean, I know clutches can be noisy. Yeah. But never enough to like question it Mm -hmm. where it may be a problem. Mm -hmm. And then like replacing parts and fixing it. You know what I'm saying? So like, right. Let me back way up and say, is it even a clutch issue at all? Mm. Okay. Like if your engine is not tuned well, it can be rough. Yeah. And is that a chattering we're hearing? Okay. That's a good point. Like, well, like, first of all, inline fours don't like to idle under a thousand. Yeah. Right. And the spec is probably 1100 or something RPM on this guy. Yep. Um, I don't know. This sounds crazy, but maybe check uh, your fuel screw tuning and mm. carb sync and get your idle to 1100. Yeah. I mean, that's just crazy out of the box thinking. No, I mean, because, I mean, dude, like CRF 450s are coming out of the box. Like, they want them things at like almost 18, 1900 RPM. Yeah. I mean, they're like singing. And you're yeah. like, this sounds really bad. It sounds like, the, but if, if you bring it down, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Or you know what a bike sounds like when the carbs are out of sync? It's yeah. like, it sounds like it's knocking like crazy, right? Right. Right. Um, so I don't know. It's just, something to think about i guess yeah i was thinking like could it be like timing chain but i feel like the clutch lever wouldn't make it do that pulling yeah. the clutch lever and wouldn't change no it wouldn't, it wouldn't right well okay so i i didn't look up the parts schematic on this i don't know if this guy has primary drive trains hooked up to the crank i don't know if it runs yeah. off a gear off the crank or a chain set Good question. Like, like the CB500, 750 yeah. and stuff. So if if it's not running smooth and you got a chain set, all of a sudden that could start You're totally right. clacking, yeah. you know? Um, I should have looked that up, but I, I just figured. We'll do that next time. I don't know. Yeah. Right. We'll at least Google the bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Cool, man. I think that's all the time we got. Yeah. I mean, we got some questions banged out. Uh. We try to hit and release three or four questions per episode. It's what's what it seems like it's coming down to. Yeah, that's to, right. We, we don't want to crush too much of you guys this time with a 30 or 40 minute thing. Let us know, actually, in the comments. Let us know, is this awesome? Uh, do you hate it? Um, do you wish we could answer more questions and just stop talking about ourselves? Let us know. You have anything to plug? Uh, check out my site how to motorcycle repair.com. I have what over 200 videos that you yeah, can yeah. definitely check out. That's yeah. You it. actually just worked, did the awesome thing on uh vapor hone stuff too, man. That was pretty killer. Yeah. I got a man. I'm, I'm beat from a few months of <laughs> all that video work. So I'm just, uh, I'm just chilling right now. Just trying yeah. to, you know, do a collaboration video with Motorcycle MD. That's what That's you're right. to do. That's right. <laughs> this is easy. Talking and drinking beer is is nice. It's right nice on, break. man. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who do not know me, um, um, check out my website, The Motorcycle MD. I have tons of tons of carb stuff on there. I have uh, I have multiple products with single twin inline four. And now introduced a V4 for like Magna stuff, newer Magna stuff. Check them out total walkthroughs on there and uh, uh, as well as the mailing list um, you can join there as well you get a free troubleshooting cheat sheet that I hand drawn and wrote just for you guys it's pretty ridiculous but you get it for free just for joining the mailing list and that allows me to contact you when new videos like this one with me and Matt come out uh, it gives you first notice of when it's going to hit um, and that's it that's, that's it. it yeah so the email ask broken moto at gmail.com hit us up make a video pictures give us a bunch of information again what matt said in the beginning the more information the better yeah follow um, the rules guys follow the rules <laughs> and uh we'll see you guys next time we'll probably be adding rules as time goes on <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be a list this long of stuff you gotta submit so yeah perfect we'll, we'll, right. send, we'll, we'll send them back a reply email with the rules yeah <laughs> cool yeah all right guys see you next, uh, next time see, see ya Ha, <laughs> ha,